My name's Nick. I started Nick's Electronics Repair about 10 years ago, and since then we've fixed about 25,000 devices. In today's video, we're going to be fixing a Bobcat controller base. The customer that sent it in stated that when they turned on the unit, the fuel gauge was stuck on empty, which is it is right now, and obviously it's supposed to move. So let's open it up and figure out how we need to fix it. First, we're going to go ahead and disassemble it. We're gonna remove the connector over here to the right. And this piece comes out. Next, we're gonna remove the gauges. Next, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the four screws here. And that whole piece just came out. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So these are the two stepper motors. And on the back side, they are soldered in. We have four joints over here and then four over here. So we're gonna go ahead and desolder them and push them through and replace them with our brand new ones. Now, only one of these stepper motors is actually defective, but when we see one go out, that means the other one is usually not too far behind. So we like to replace both of them at the same time. So for this one, we're gonna be using our desolder wick and iron. So actually, we're gonna switch over to our microscope. All right, and we are definitely getting a little bit of a better angle, and now that we're zoomed in more, it definitely looks like we still have some solder in these joints that we need to clear out. Okay, that looks a lot better. And let's see, does this... Okay, I think that one's loose. This one, however, most definitely still has some solder. There we go. So now we should be able to push it through. Is it falling through? It is. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and do our next one. And I did actually already add some solder to the pins. So the reason I like to add solder to the pins first is because it'll help me get better flow, especially with these older type circuit boards. Um, I believe these are from the early 2000s. So the solder itself can get corroded or oxidized and then it has a really hard time transferring heat properly. So adding a fresh layer of solder, leaded solder usually just helps get that nice flow. All right, let's see. Do we have movement? Nope. Okay, so this one's moving, and the other three are not. This means I did not do a good job desoldering, which we could clearly tell on one of them, this one. Now, if I can't get all the solder to come off, Oh, there we go. I was gonna say my next step is to try to add more solder and start over. Okay, that looks like it's free and clear. That one's free and clear. This one has a tiny little bit more solder on the side. Okay, that should be free and clear. Oof. All right, that one, the pat's coming off. It's typically not a huge deal when it's coming off on a no connect. Let's see, okay. We can pull it through. So I don't think that that's gonna actually be an issue at all. But um, yeah, we'll see. All right, here are my two brand new stepper motors. All right, and we can go ahead and start soldering our replacements in.
And this is the one with the loose soldering joint. So what we want to make sure is that we're getting solder inside of that joint because obviously that top piece is loose, but the joint internally should still be good. Unless it's a no connect, in which case there's probably nothing in, inside of there. All right, we're gonna give all of it a little clean. Remove some of that extra flux. Now we should be able to put everything back together. Now on this one, it looks like the metal needle stayed inside of the gauge, so we're gonna have to remove that. And this can be a little tricky. Oh, there we go. You just wanna be careful, because these gauges are a little fragile. We'll reconnect this connector. Now just for the purpose of this video, we're only gonna put two screws. Okay, we'll connect this back in. All right, let's see if we fixed it. We're gonna go ahead and power it on. And are the gauges moving? I can't tell. Hey, our fuel is on full now. This does conclude our repairs for this Bobcat controller base. If you have a similar unit you would like to send in for us to fix, we will have our contact information as well as a flat rate service in the video description down below. Otherwise, if you found the video helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.